Hello YouTube and welcome to Mitch Plays Kerbal Space Program Episode 2 Duna or Bust. Here I have my uh, spacecraft that I have built uh, off camera and uh, yeah it should work. I've got a mech jab and a Kerbal Engineer running as well as tweak scale and a couple other mods that I'll list in the description. So without any uh, further ado, uh, let's launch. Okay, let me just make sure that the fans are running at full speed so we don't have uh, any thermal throttle throttling. And there will be a little uh, noise in the background from this. But uh, hopefully it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so let me just uh, pull up the ascent guidance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And engage and launch. And off we go. Soaring through the sky and to hopefully land and safely return from Duna. And for those of you not uh, familiar with Kerbal Space Program, Duna is the uh, in-game equivalent of Mars. So yeah. And we have uh, Bill and Jeb in the corner. Let's do an, uh, let's do an IBA. Yeah. And this is the interior of the cabin. There's Jeb, looking at hogging the window, Ugh. always with Jeb. Yeah, we got the little uh, fire extinguisher, we got the escape hatch right here. A very nice interior design. And uh, let's look from Jeb's point of view. Uh, Jeb. Right at the helm, we got these dials. We got the little nav ball and the vertical speed, which I'm not sure if that moves or. It seems that we're going up course. Oh, wait. Nope. Yeah, we're just doing a uh, gravity turn. Yeah, everything is in order, and we see Kerbin slowly shrink beneath us. You know, we can do a quick little turnaround. And uh, the second stage just kicked in. That was, uh, that's what that was. Let me see if I can uh, show you the rest of the, the rocket. Yeah, you can see. The bottom stage is uh, falling away. And, um, yeah. Sorry for the mess of struts on the, the top. I know it doesn't look that good, but it was either that or had the uh, entire ship wobble apart on scent. So, yeah. But all seems to be going well. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yes, let's uh, go back, give you the tour of the cabin from uh, Jeb's, Jeb's view. Yeah. 
There's not really much to see other than uh, out the window from Jake's point of view. But uh, I'll let you see the, the full, you know, 180 degrees. So, uh, yeah, launching into space. Yeah. And they're back there. I hate that this game is all in metric. And I wish there was some way to convert it into a, a standard or US units. Um, if any of you know mod, uh, please write in the comments. I would love to see that because I don't know what 30 kilometers means, like, at all. So, yeah, that would help. And, uh, yeah, if we look at our apoapsis or the high point of our orbit, We're um, almost at the goal of uh, 125, which is uh, optimal because um, at 120, you get um, to go from 50 times zoom to 100 times zoom. Yeah. We can uh, see the path of the orbit from here. Let me close that. You can also see information on our vessel including the total mass, which is decreasing as we uh, burn fuel. The situation, flying, of course. Velocity, altitude, acceleration, maximum possible acceleration. <coughs> and the amount of time we, and the amount of fuel burn time we have left. I think that's what it is. Maybe, yes, no. I'm not entirely sure what that is. And we're now suborbital. And, um, yeah. Jebediah and Bill Kerman are, uh, captains. Well, Jebediah is the captain and, uh, Bill is the, the crew. But yeah, they're both, uh, five stars. And, yeah. Let me check our fuel. That's Mac Jeb. That's, uh, Turbo engineering, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, and we're about to go to this maneuver node. And I have to do a 319 meter per second burn. <clears throat> Which is all done by the, the very useful uh, autopilot. Which is uh, much more accurate than a, uh, a human could ever be. As it uh, is part, and well, you can, it's a mod, but it's essentially built into the game to get it exactly right. Like a normal person at this point would probably have uh, just said close enough, which is what I'm going to do. Oh, that did it for me. <coughs> so, yeah, now we are at uh, 125 kilometer or a hundred thousand uh a hundred twenty five thousand meter orbit right around uh the curve you can see it uh it deploys our uh, solar panels for us which is uh very useful because uh, if we want run out of uh electricity then we can't uh what is it called? Uh, we can't move the ship because we're using uh, SAS gyroscopes to uh, control the ship. So now I'm going to close this and uh, bring out a maneuver planner, transfer to another planet, and uh, now we just got a uh, select Duna. So here, that is not Duna. Oh. Wait, oh yeah, I can zoom with moon. So Duna is now target. 
create node. <coughs> uh, excuse me. We don't want to uh, create and execute because with a node this far away, the directions are the direction you want to be facing is very unstable, which will cause your ship to wobble around endlessly. And since we're not going to wait, sit here and wait 125 days, and even with 100 times zoom, that is pretty slow. We're just going to uh, go back down to Kerbin Control Center and uh, go to the Space Center. Okay. Yeah. So now I'll just select that ship and we hold it over. It doesn't say maneuver for whatever reason. I'm not sure if this is a glitch in my uh, the game, but it says periapsis. But obviously the <coughs> low point of the orbit is not 235 days away, as it says right there. It's uh, 14 minutes away. So what we can do is we can hover our mouse there, and as we go a hundred or ten thousand or whatever number that was times faster, we watch uh, the days take away to uh, the maneuver. And this is the optimal time to uh, do the burn, uh, so that we can uh, get to uh, Duna with the with using the least amount of fuel possible. Is good because you know you can only bring up so much fuel and have it actually get off the launch pad. So yeah, I'm just gonna wait for that to uh, tick down. Uh huh. Five. Four. Three, ignore that, two, one, ah, shoot, and I missed it completely. <coughs> so, yeah, that sucks, don't, don't get the buttons on the keyboard mixed up. <coughs> mm. So now I have to uh, cancel that node, move all nodes, and create a new node. Oh wait, this is transfer. I want advanced transfer. Move all nodes. Ah, uh, there we go. And let's just see how much uh, Delta V we have in this. Oh, perfect. Uh, that's very good. Saves us a lot of fuel. So let's. Uh... Oh, we can go right now. Which is uh, incredibly convenient, as waiting for it to warp is never fun. Not for me, and I'm sure not for you. So uh, yeah, it's just gonna auto warp to um yeah it's twenty seconds, and uh, once it's halfway through, um we have a uh, thing yeah. So yeah, it's going to uh, burn about. Thousand uh, meters per second delta V, and um, if you're wondering what delta V is, then uh, I have, I think it's uh, meters per second potential. Uh, it's, it's the potential to move. With the amount of. Uh, <coughs> Like potential energy and fuel you have, or something of that sort. 
but uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm sure you could look it up on the internet. And if you don't have access to the internet, then, well, how are you watching this video? <clears throat> so, uh, here, let me just cancel a little bit of that, and, um, yeah, let's look at our, uh, wait, let's zoom out, and we can see, ah, uh, perfect, a Duna Encounter. So, let's see, let's just auto-warp. Out of the uh, sphere of influence of uh, Duna. Okay. So now we should be able to auto warp so I do not mess up. Again, auto warp, also a great new feature of uh, Kerbal Space Program 1.0. Let's just auto warp there. It's not perfect or even close but you know, at this point we're too far away to click accurately on it yeah. and um, if you're wondering what computer I'm using to uh, do this it's the um, iMac 5k with a, a quad core Intel i7 uh, 4.4.0 gigahertz with a 4.4 .4 turbo and uh, 8 gigs RAM and the uh, 4, gig 4 gigabytes da da what is it called graphics dedicated RAM and um, you can watch my unboxing on uh, this YouTube channel so yeah if you're wondering Okay, warp complete. Now we are close enough. So let me just, since I can just get a warp right onto the encounter with the sphere of influence of the planet Duna. Uh, warp here. Yes. Okay, no. Let me just warp. Damn it. Right, there we go. So, yeah. And um, once you get into the sphere of influence, your, uh, your view changes. And so I'm just going to warp here now. Because I wanted to see what type of encounter it was. Because uh, sometimes it'll be that this type of encounter you go straight into the planet, and uh, other times you will need to uh, orbit and then deorbit the uh, the planet. So let's see. And uh, I see it's circular. Right. Fine tune closest approach. Target. Now, I mean, if I right click on this, uh, so I have to regular click, set as target. Okay, so I cannot do that apparently. Once well, maybe using the landing guidance, I wanted to uh, use that later, but. And somewhere Okay, show the landing. Wait, auto let me turn off 
Ah, shoot, 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 shoot. Oh. Ah, it's doing it automatically, what do you know? That's very handy. If I personally was doing it, I would have uh, done a little sh shower of an uh, entry. But you know, that's what the machine thinks is a good idea. I mean, I just hope I have enough uh, fuel that uh, once I land on Duna, I will be able to get back. Because um, every other time I've done this, um, and I've done this several times, I've never, ever had enough fuel to get back off of Duna. You know, to fix that, all these tanks are basically empty and uh, the calculations are much more accurate when you have uh, the tank that you're using. So I'm just going to eject. Eject. Damn it. Let me abort auto land for a minute. Oh shoot, I'm warping. Uh, that's a problem. So eject, and it also gets rid of a bunch of those uh, ugly looking struts. <coughs> And, um, well, it may look like I'm accelerating away from that. It is just the fact that, um, when you use the, uh, what do you call it? When you use the separators, it, pu it has a certain push away force. <coughs> and, um, in space, since there's no friction, there's uh, nothing to diminish that force, so, uh, the two objects will just continue to move farther and farther away. So, yeah. Let's see what our... Oops, sorry for that. Yeah, let's see what our landing trajectory is. Okay. Yeah, it looks good to me. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, assuming all goes well, we will be able to land on the moon and Jemadiah Kerman, and possibly, if I decide, Bill Kerman will exit the spacecraft and uh, set foot the first feet of Kerman kind. Onto the the Duna or Dunar surface, or Lunar or Martian or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's a free country. America. So yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, seems to be yeah. For some reason it seems that it thinks that the ship is accelerating. And uh yeah, let's um let's get some information on Duna. Yada yada yada. Also known as the red dot. Radius, mass, gravity, state velocity, rotation period, a sphere of influence, atmospheric height, 50,000. But yeah. The strange thing about the uh, trajectory things in this game is uh, the trajectory um, movement things will uh, show what would happen if just the mass of the planet was there and not the actual physical like thing that you will crash into and die so uh... yeah 
Let's see, you know, resources. I don't think it has an ocean. Oh yeah, and uh, 1.0 there's ore now. Which is uh, cool. Let's get let's get back to that ship. The ship. That ship though. <coughs> It is uh, slowing down before it is. Well, actually, it's in the atmosphere, but it's not really in the atmosphere. That shows uh, that shows how much atmosphere there is, and doesn't really it won't really start to feel the effects of the, the extreme effects of the atmosphere, even though you're seeing some heating until somewhere in uh, this area. So yeah, but you can uh, see that the uh, shock heating, shock heating effects in this game are uh, very nice. And uh, yeah, so maybe um, if we don't run out of fuel on this descent, I'll get lucky and uh, and we'll land on Duna and we'll be able to take off successfully and. Uh, and uh, get back to Carbon. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. We are, at the moment, only 9,000 8,000 feet above terrain. The terrain height is uh, right up here. For those of you that are wondering, it's part of a Kerbal Engineer. And um, uh, this is starting to get a little too close for uh, <coughs> comfort. So, yeah, I really hope that doesn't crash itself into the no, I'm just going to board the auto land. I know this is probably a terrible idea. Full throttle. And I'm pointing at retrograde. And uh we deploy. <laughs> Landing gear. Now, hopefully, all the parachutes won't break and just kill us. Yes, that is wonderful. The parachutes have uh, fully opened, and even though the the main stage. It's completely out of fuel. Um, the parachutes are doing a good enough job of uh, keeping us from plummeting to our death. And hopefully the landing legs are strong enough to take an impact at uh, 6 meters per second. I don't really know what 6 meters per second is. Again, still looking for that uh, mod to change it to uh, American units. So yeah, I'm time warping because uh, you know, take a while to go down. It's still that's how we're still pretty high above the uh, <clears throat> the terrain. And uh, I wish I would have added lights on here. I forgot to add lights, but. Uh, it's a little too late to do that now, don't you think? Uh, and uh, slow down the descent and uh, it's really much nicer if we if we uh, land in the day because then you get to see the uh, the shadow of the craft touch down. Uh, yeah. So, and, uh... I 
I believe we have, uh, we have, uh, landed. And we're not exactly the most stable thing in the universe at the moment. Let's see. Oh, so we are. Oh, it's we're just us. Uh, must be it. I'm just gonna turn this back on just in case. I'm going to do an E V A. And um, this is uh, <coughs> Jeb. Oh, I'm just gonna turn on the lights. Um, we gotta repack all the shoots on the top part. Um, so that way, when we get back into, uh, Turban, we, we can, uh, not die, which is, uh, the main goal of this mission. <coughs> At least I think. I don't know. I guess the main goal is to uh, have fun, but that sounds really cheesy. So let's go with not die. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might edit this part out because, you know, no one really wants to see someone right click a billion times to repack <clears throat> a bunch of shoots. I mean, I guess you could say, oh shoot, we have to watch this. Huh. Fun. Yeah. You know, I'll finish this off uh, later. But right now, I want to go down and I want to plant that flag. <clears throat> so let me wait for this uh, ladder to expand. And, uh, yeah. Kerbals are uh, not very fast at all. as you can see at the moment. Okay, so. This is, well, why don't we plant it right here? So let me right click, plant a flag. Let's watch him take it out and stick it into the ground. <coughs> Huzzah. Sightening. First landing. Kerbal. Kind. As long. Look. Into the stars. No, not into the stars, into the sky and as the, <clears throat> the question can I as and now, turbo kind can has do not. Okay, so now we'll just add the bait the uh, thrusters and um, yeah, I think it's. The ladder, although useful, is still quite a distance off of the ground, so F. Shoot. Uh, this is a 
difficult. Uh, yes. Got it. And um, another nice thing is that uh, the base, the orange tank here, all the orange, that will all stay on Duna. Almost like a monument to this uh, historic landing in um, Kerbal history, I guess. If, I don't know. You want to retract this? Oh, uh, shoot. That was not the best idea. Apparently, I was still on that ladder. So. This is also probably a lot faster. But it is difficult, as I said previously, to uh, maneuver. Ah, there we go. So, yeah. And forget it, I'm not, probably not going to use this bottom part for much re-entry stuff anyways. I'll be lucky if I get back to, uh, back to Kerbin. So it's board. And it's board. And, um, sent guidance. I just want to get above the, uh, the atmosphere, which is 50,000, so I'll go 55,000. And, um, yeah. Engage. And, uh, there we go. Leaving, uh, that monument and that flag for, uh, future generations of Kerbals to go and see. If we ever even make it back on. Which, uh, there is a decent possibility that we will not. But yeah, let's hope that it works. And, um, I'm almost 100% sure we can get into uh, orbit. But, um, depending on how much uh, Delta V we have once we get into orbit, I may or may not decide to uh, leave it there and um, rescue them at a uh, further point. Because, you know, if we start on the way back to Kerbin and there's not enough Delta V, then we'll be lost in interplanetary space and it is much, much harder to uh, track down a ship and get close to it in interplanetary space as opposed to uh, orbiting a uh, body. I mean, I suppose technically you're orbiting the sun, but you know, that's a much larger uh, area where you can be <clears throat> than uh, orbiting a planet. Well, uh, so, um, yeah, we are letting the autopilot uh, take us up. And it has uh, created a maneuver, and there is just barely enough fuel in this, uh, this mid tank here for that maneuver, so it does look like we will not get back to uh, Kerbin in this episode, but uh, I'll probably be making a new episode uh, shortly that shows us going and retrieving Bill and Jed um, from doing the uh, orbit. So uh, yeah, let's just get into orbit here. And um, I'll 
I'll show you the orbit and the uh, graph. So yeah, if, uh, is that node to get into orbit? Yes, it is. Seems we are in orbit, and uh, well, it does say we still have 831 delta v. That's probably nowhere near enough. I mean, let's see if I create a what do you call it? Transfer. Maneuver planner. Okay, advanced transfer. Let's see. If it is under 800, then we could we could very well go back to uh, Duna. I mean, Kerbin. Sorry, Kerbin. In this episode, but uh, I have a feeling that it will not be. Oh, 650. Three. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we could, uh, we can definitely do that with the amount of, I mean, you see right here we have 831 just in the top stage, and uh, most of that is from the overkill landing engines and tank. But we don't really need that, I mean, yeah, we could definitely get back, um, but uh, before I do that, I'm just going to uh, pause this, there's something I have to do, and um, I'll be right back. And uh, I'm back. So, we can go back. Kerbin, I'm... Uh, <clears throat> But repacking all of these parachutes on the bottom part here was complete waste of time. So, I'm just going to, uh, what is it called? Uh, hit, hit the space bar and decouple with a uh, nice fire explosion. And, um, create the node. Okay, now let me remove all of the nodes because it's behaving because it's behaving weird. Um okay, yeah, create node. Good, let me just stop stop the rotation. We're actually working on a limited uh what's it called? A limited electric charge now because uh these engines, although very useful, do not provide electricity. And we don't have any solar panels on this thing. But we do have this nice battery pack. It should last us, in theory, a good long while. So um, let's go back to the uh, space center. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So you guys know the drill, and hopefully this time I will not overshoot. So, time to fast forward. <coughs> so yeah, this is going to be my first time having ever successfully gone to uh, Duna and back. Which, um... For me, I find uh, very exciting because uh, while this is the first time I'm recording it, I've tried several times off camera to uh, successfully land on Duna and return. And uh, this is the first time I'm going to uh, have been able to do it. And um, I was lucky enough to decide to record the whole endeavor. So. Um, so you guys can watch. And uh, I was almost positive that I was going to have to uh, make a separate episode to retrieve it just because that's how every other time I have uh, attempted this has gone. So, yeah. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, we have... Uh, about 240 days left to go, and uh, 
it's times like this where I wish that uh, the time acceleration could go a little faster. But I guess a hundred thousand times is uh, it's already pretty good. But for really long missions like this, it can take uh, quite a while. So yeah. Ooh, boy. Um, so let's see. Now, hopefully this time, I will not overshoot it, because I have a feeling that if I have to do this again, the opportunity will not be as nice. Okay, I'm spawning down a little. Ah. And, uh... With two hours to spare. Perfect mundo. So let's uh, <clears throat> go back in to the uh, spacecraft. And uh, let's see. Execute next node. And uh, we'll now leave it in the. Uh, in the hands of auto war, which is ridiculously 